Hello everyone. Welcome to Analytic School YouTube channel. This is second session in base SAS programming. In this session, we will talk about SAS and see the things what we can do in SAS environment. And then we will go through the SAS university edition interface where we are going to learn about base SAS programming. And then we will talk about fundamentals of the base SAS programming. Let's start with the first topic about SAS. SAS stands for a statistics analysis system. It was founded in the year 1960 as a statistical pa package. However, it is also an extremely powerful general purpose programming language. Moreover, it can do data manipulation, data creation, ETL activities, data admin activities, and it can read data from almost any data source and can do much more. Uh, when I say uh, it can connect with almost any data source, uh, I mean connecting with big data, uh, connecting with the RDBMS data source or any other external data source such as an Excel file, CSV file or TXT file. Unlike many other software applications which are either menu driven or command driven, SAS is neither. With SAS, you use SAS statements to write a series of SAS instructions called as SAS program. The program communicates what you want to do and is written using SAS language. SAS program is nothing but a sequence of statements executed in order. A statement gives instruction to SAS and should be placed adequately in the program. It is just like going to a grocery store and asking the shop owner that you need one butter, three soaps, one detergent powder, etc. etc. A SAS program is an ordered set of SAS statements like the order set of the instructions you use when you go to a grocery store. Now we are going to see SAS University Edition interface where we are going to learn base SAS programming. I hope by now everyone has recorded uh, downloaded SAS Studio and uh, if not then please go and download the software before watching this video ahead. So in real world scenario you are not going to use SAS University Edition uh, SAS Studio. Uh, normally you are going to use SAS Enterprise Guide or traditional base SAS software where you are going to code. Um, would like to tell you that in SAS Enterprise Guide, there are some pre-written SAS code where you can just click and get your results. But most of the time, or I, I'll say basically a SAS programmer is going to write the codes to get his desired results for data manipulation, data creation, or doing a statistical analysis. So in SAS Studio or SAS University Edition interface, we are going to see that how the interface is, where other things are, and how we are going to work on it. So in SAS Industry Edition interface, uh, here you are going to see uh, server files and folders. In server si files and folders, you can store only uh, CSV files, uh, basically fa flat files, which are like CSV files, Excel file, TXT files, uh, PDF files, or SAS data sets so that you can go back and you know uh, import the data into your uh, SAS environment, SAS University Edition interface. Then there are task and utilities. What is that is basically, uh, uh, if you'll click on, let's suppose, graphs. And if you'll click on bar chart, you will find some pre-recorded uh, pre things and you have to just add column here to build up a chart. So here we are creating a chart and you see that it is writing code automatically. And then let's suppose we are clicking on height and clicking on a run button. So you see here it creates a chart automatically. These are the pre-written codes by the SAS, which are uh, general SAS code, for example, for creating bar charts or statistic analysis or uh, creating your data. So here you can do these type of this, uh, these type of the thing. Importing data. When I say importing data, here you can import your data uh, from server files and folders like TXT files, CSV files, or Excel files. Query and SAS program. SAS program is nothing else. Is a new window which will uh, pop up, and you can write the SAS programs. The snippets. The snippets is. For example, if you are writing a code and every day you are writing the same code, so you can save that particular code and the form of the snippets. 
for example let's suppose if i am going to graphs again and if i'm clicking on bar panel it will show you a simple code which is written here you, here you just need to change the data set if you want to change and uh, the variables which you want to change and you will get the chart so basically you can uh, write a code and save in the form of the snippets libraries libraries uh, just think in this way for example if you are using windows then you create folders and you save your files so folders are basically you remember that where you are saving those files so in the same way uh, in sas there are some pre-built libraries like sas help sas user web work work is a temporary temp, uh, temporary library where uh, when you are creating any data sets or doing anything it is going to save your work here later on in the next session we are going to see that how we create our own permanent libraries uh, which are very helpful in saving our work so and then these are the file shortcuts where you can just like the bookmarks we have um, in uh, windows uh, so similarly we can create bookmarks here and uh, we can go back come back and you know uh, start working uh, working from there on so this this is it about uh, the server files and folders task and utilities uh, snippets libraries and all the stuff then this is uh, uh, basically you can say a space where you are going to going to write your sas program for example So here you see when I uh, when I wrote this program and run this program, I got my results that there are 19 observations and there are you know five variables. Ob OBS is uh, the variable which is created by SAS itself, so it's just showing that how many uh, number of the records is for for our ease. And then there is something called log. Log is where it is going to show you that how uh, SAS works. For example, uh, it, it is showing you the code. And if we are using any options, you know, global options in SAS, it is going to show, show us that, then the code. And then it is showing that it SAS has read 19 observation from uh, data set SAS help dot class. And then it has uh, run uh, pro procedure print to show us a result. If we are making any errors in the SAS program, uh, then you are going to s see those in this way you will come to know that what type of the problem you are facing in SAS code and then you can go back and rectify those issues. Now we are going to discuss about fundamentals of base SAS programming. Before we are going to talk about our number one rule, let me tell you even a very experienced SAS professional makes this error. Let me show you. So this is a correct program. Let me remove this semicolon and now run this program. So here you see, this time I haven't put up a semicolon and I have got this particular error and there is nothing in the result set window. So every SAS statement end with a semicolon. And trust me, even a very experienced SaaS professional who may be having 10 years or 15 years of the experience, they sometimes make this mistake. So a thumb off rule, every SaaS statement is going to end with a semicolon. The next thing which we are going to learn about is how to name a SaaS data set or naming a new SaaS variable. There are few simple rules which we need to follow that all SAS variable names and data set name can not be longer than 32 characters. The second thing is the name must begin with a letter or under underscore. The remaining characters can be alphabets or digits or, so, or underscore. So let's see how the SAS naming rule works.
So here you see in the program, everything was perfect. So my, uh, starting with numbers or something else, let's see how it is going to work. Let's see if I'm going to put up one before name. It will show us an error. You see, syntax error expecting one of the following, uh, a name, hash, plus at the rate, something of that sort. But it's basically going to start with underscore or with an alphabet. Let's see. So this is a correct nomenclature. Always remember this thing. Same thing for uh, the data, data set name. For example, right now test is fine. Test two is also fine. But if I'm going to write it as one test two, it is going to give us an error. So always remember two things when you are going to name a SAS data set name or a variable in SAS. All SAS variable names and data sets name can no longer be 32 characters. The name must begin with letter or, or the underscore. The remaining characters can be alphabet, digits or underscore, but no other special, uh, special character. Now we will talk about SAS datasets. In SAS terminology, the data consists of variables and observations. If someone has worked on relational databases, then SAS datasets are also called as tables. Observation are also known as rows and variable can also be called as columns. In SAS, there are two types of the data. One is character and the other one is numeric. That's it. In some cases, your data set is incomplete. In those cases, missing character data is represented by blanks and missing numeric data is represented by periods. Let me show you. In the data set test, there are uh, there are variables which have missing data and the character data will be represented by blank and numeric, de numeric data will be represented by period. Let me run this program. So here you see in name, there is one name which is blank in observation number two. And whereas you can see in eight, the numeric variable age is uh, again missing and it is represented by period. Same with observation number 14, 15, 17, and 19. So missing character data is represented by blank and missing numeric data is represented by period. Now we are going to learn the most important thing in SAS. SAS programs are constructed from two basic building blocks, data step, and proc steps. In data steps, it begins with data statement. It reads and modifies data. It creates a say, SAS data set. In proc step, it begins with proc statement, perform a specific analysis, and it produces results or reports. Remember, this is the most important thing in SAS. So this is an end of session two. In the next session, we will work with data. We will bring some raw data in SAS environment and we will see how SAS reads the data and interpret the data. Guys, if you like this video, then please do like and subscribe us. Thank you so much. Have a great day.